Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen. So for today, we're going to take one design and turn it into two cards. Yep. I'm going to be painting some sp a spring mountain watercolor landscape. This one design you can just turn into two cards or turn into two paintings or whatever you want to do. You can take this idea and turn it into bookmarks, whatever you want to do. So I go over this step by step. I give you a reference photo. It's just really, the mountains are simple, almost like triangles that you're painting. Same thing with the trees. And then we're just doing like a very simple impressionistic style painting of the meadow in the front. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. Um, I'd like to see if you are, love to paint something like this where you just turn it into two paintings as a diptych, triptych, you know, you can do four paintings in one. <laughs> Um, just a way to kind of do a painting. One painting can have two things out of it, so it makes the time for you easier. Also, um, you know, you can have like, if, if it was a bigger size, you have two big paintings to do. Just to give you some ideas. Also, check out my Patreon. I have ad-free videos, traceables, exclusive tutorials, and a live stream in the top tier. It's just a place people go and support my channel. I recently just added a Facebook group page for the Patreon so they can share photos. We're going to start doing some challenges once a week there. Uh, all kind of fun stuff. And you can check it out boop, up here in a second. Boop. So without further ado, let's have fun going to the mountain in the springtime. <laughs> okay, let's go over supplies. I have two pieces of Arsh 100% cotton cold pressed paper. They're about like four by six. You can make whatever size you want. And then craft paper can be any color that you're gonna, they're going to be taped upon. Um, I have black hair, any color you want to use, right? And I've taped them pretty close together because we're going to make like a diptych, you know, like one whole scene, but it's basically cut in two, right? I'll be using my Princeton 10 round Velvet Touch series, my Princeton 12 round uh, Aqua Elite series brush, uh, paper towels, and paint as we go along. So I give you a reference photo to go by. And it's just really simple shapes, right? I do like a horizon line here, which you see right here. You draw the little mountain shapes up and down, up and down. And we'll be using some gouache to keep, if, unless you want to just try and play with some uh, masking fluid, I would just use gouache at the end to do the white caps, you know. And you don't, worry, you don't have to worry about putting the cloud in. I'm not going to bother with the cloud. Just want to do like the nice pretty purple ground, I mean uh, sky. Simple greens here, uh, just like a whatever color you want to paint, like a beige kind of ground here. And then we're going to do the beautiful meadow and the pinks here. That would be really kind of pretty. So we'll do some mountain type colors. And then the, the mountains are like kind of gray. You could do vice versa with the sky is maybe blue and the mountains are purple. Play around with that. You know, you don't have to do exactly as you see there. So I've already drawn in my mountains. I've like I separate like I talked about. I separated the two pieces of paper. I taped them down with just Scotch magic tape. Really, don't, I don't use anything special than that. Um, it's kind of the tape I like, to, my go-to tape. So I would start just by mixing up some color first with the sky. Now that sky is more of a purple, and there's like some bright pink in there. For purples, I like to use ultramarine blue. This is ultramarine blue deep. And I have some bright rose here. It makes a perfect purple. You could use magenta, um, whatever works for you. This is more of a bluish purple. If you grab some magenta, it would get more magenta, like more, yeah, more magenta. It would get more, you know, like a pinky, pinky or pur pinky or purple. See, you had that color in there. It's really pretty. Um, I would have like Payne's gray mixed up kind of near it. You can play around with mixing the two and then we'll get into our greens in a bit. So we do the sky first. And the sky, it seems like a little too purple. I might add some more blue. I'm making a blue purple. You can either do wet on damp or wet on wet. So what do I mean by that? Well, right now we can just play with just putting in the color. This is wet on dry, right? Just putting the color in it now. Or you can get this whole area wet and just bleed the color into it. So I'm getting the whole area above the mo um, mount mountains here. You can, if you hit over the mountains, that's fine too. But I'm gonna dilute that one I just did. Just get this all wet. And I would kind of lift here. I, I also taped this down on a, just cardboard here. And you can just kind of play with putting in the sky like this. I might add a little more blue, like I said. Get a nice purple sky, bluish purple sky. 
and then there's some pink I'm lifting it up this way I'm gonna loosen up some of that bright rose that you see over here there's some pink in that sky I'm just doing it on an angle kind of going this way pulling it down this way this is stopped because it wasn't wet right there see how the water doesn't move the water water goes where the water flows <laughs> So if there's no water there, it's not going to flow. I mean, you see it puddling here. You can kind of just lift it a little bit. I'm going to grab some more of that purple blue. You can kind of put some in between some of the pink. If you don't want it to bleed down, you might want to put it down like this, but you can play around. I'm going to add a little more blue in the sky here. And I could put a little pink in here too. And again, just kind of lift up all the little puddles with your brush and tap it down on a towel, a paper towel, whatever you're using. Some people use paper towels. Some people use actual like rags. That works great too. The rags are probably more environmentally friendly. Depends if you want to put them in your wash or not. You want to pre-rinse pre them. So I have some pink here. I'll go back in and add a little bit of purple blue. Or you can just take some ultramarine blue and kind of mix it in here. It'll turn purple because it's touching the pink. Just going to grab a little more blue just to get that blue in the sky. And that's kind of it. You don't really have to fuss with it too much. Just want to keep it simple. And there's our little other sky, and we're sticking with it. <laughs> now, moving into the mountains, you know, just be cautious, you know, cautious of like getting too close to this sky and bleeding it into the sky. It's still going to be damp, so we want to kind of wait till it kind of dries a little bit. We can start mixing our color. We can remove some of this blue. or keep some of it here and mix it with your Payne's gray. Then the mountains are grayish brown. We can play with the gray and the brown. I've got burnt umber and Payne's gray here. Or you can make them, like I said, purple. You can make another purple. This could have been really light purple. This could have been a deeper purple. Could play around with some of that. You see the light kind of shining through here a little bit, but I don't think it's necessary. We're just having fun making a loose um, spring mountain landscape, so I wouldn't get so bogged down by all the fine details of this. The light coming in there, just kind of just simple. You might want to get. If you want to do that, I would water down some yellow. I have cabin yellow deep here. Gonna water down some yellow. Mine's looking a little green because I had put some paint in there. So you can start to put that down first in the areas that you know are gonna be kind of light from the sun. So I'm just gonna tap it in here, a little bit over in here. And you know, you're gonna paint right over it anyway. And the green areas over in here. Just a couple little light areas. And that will just dry. Getting over here again. While we're waiting for this whole section to dry, we can start working on the midsection here, this this beige ground. I, I feel like it's more of a beige pink. So we've got burnt umber, and I'll grab some of that bright rose mixed in. So it's like a pink brown, you know, like that blushy brown color tones. A little gray in there. I'm gonna take our brush, we're gonna do a little dry brush technique. That's when you have minimal paint. So I'm taking this paint, which is pretty wet, tapping it on a paper towel. I'm gonna tilt my paper like this. That's why I like the cardboard stuck to it. And we just kind of like hold it on its side and just go like that. Swipe it slowly. Don't push down hard. You're just tapping like you're really just barely touching the paper. See this nice light. See that? You're barely touching the paper and you can see all the little crevices right there from the dry brush. It's really pretty. Now in between that, it's kind of whitish gray. You can add a little bit of gray. Again, tap that color down, taking the gray. Because if you took gray straight from the tube and even just like this, it's still gonna be so dark. You have to water it down. With watercolor, it's translucent. You gotta water it down with acrylic oil. You add white. So you water it down, you tap the paper towel, get the excess water off because it's just gonna bead and make a mess. And I'm just gonna do the same thing with this gray tone. And we can add some more depth later, some darker color. Again with the brown and the pink, a little bit darker, less water now. Tap again, paper towel. 
I like the pink tones. A little bit darker, a little more detail. Maybe add a little gray. Just a few dark, dark details. That's that dry brush technique. And that's that. Mine's a little darker than the picture. It just it will dry lighter, so you know it depends. So we can start working on our meadow while this is all drying. Let me check and see if it's dry. Now it's still damp. We could play around with it a little bit. Let's play around with the. Eh. I'm back and forth here, but I, I think we can play around with the mountain. It's not so wet. Uh, the sky is still wet. Okay, just when you try and figure out if it's dry or wet or not, just tap it. If it still feels a little wet, then don't go down that area. So we're going to work on the meadow. What you see here is a lot of greens and pinks. So like watercolor, unlike gouache and acrylic, um, you need to leave white spaces to put the pinks in because it's going to it can get muddy on the green unless you're using straight paint out of the tube or mixing with gouache. That's the only way you're going to get that pink on top of the green. So I kind of mishmash it, like leaving some white spaces and the green. So here we have peacock blue. If you don't have peacock blue, you can use turquoise. Or if you don't even have either one of those and you have one color like Prussian blue, which is like my favorite of all time color for blues, you can just use this one blue for both greens. And I'll show you. Clean up my brush. I'm gonna grab yellow. So grab more yellow. And I'll show you why I'm grabbing a lot of yellow. You wanna mix a really good amount of green, so more yellow. Okay, just in that yellow right there with the Prussian blue. Get a nice medium green. Mix that just on your brush. I don't even add more paint. Into the yellow, you get a nice bright chartreuse color green. And you kind of combine the two, you get in between. If you add more Prussian blue to this green, obviously it's going to be darker and more blue. I always add like a little brown for the deeper blue excuse me, the deeper green. So you see like the three varieties of greens here. Again, clean up my brush. I'm using number 12, big old brush. I still have a lot of water on my brush. And I'm gonna take this, this consistency is more like coffee. And I'm gonna do this dabbing kind of situation. All right, so this is wet on dry. You can also clean up your brush. Put all this water if you want to. But what happens is it's going to blend into each other. So you don't want to do that. That's why I'm doing look this way, right? If you start to put the green, it's all going to bleed into that. You're going to have to wait till it stops bleeding to put in the pink in between those white spaces. That's why I kind of do it the wet on dry way. And even if it's wet on dry, let me go now here you can leave the white space and it's still damp where the green is. See the difference between the two? Leaving white space and get some dark green down in here you see in the picture. I'll add, take some burnt umber on my brush, playing around with adding the color, see? That's, that's the wet on dry. It's not really moving. This is all kind of moving. And while it's still moving, you can kind of tap in some dark greens and you can tap it in now and in the ones you just did this little doodads in between the white spaces. See? I kind of tend to wait though and I'll show you why. I wait to put the darks in after I have my pinks in and the reason for that, no, oh, I think I went up. I wanted to kind of go this way. I'm gonna go up here. This is the meadow. I'm gonna be doing wet on dry now. I might go grab some water on my brush, go dip right back into that light green. Going down here. Leaving the white space like I showed you. Haphazardly by the way because we don't want the pinks to be in a row. We want them to make sense. And I'm just taking the green and just tapping it around. And you see all that white space? I'll just leave that. This part is still very damp. See, it just keeps bleeding. But it's light enough that you could put pink, on, put pink on it and not worry about it just getting all muddy and ugly. Grabbing the medium type greens, tapping that out this way, and the light green again. Medium greens, I'm adding so much in here. 
So at this point, we could start to play with adding in our pink, right? And clean up my brush. So I loosened up some of this beautiful, bright, and this is really intense pink. <laughs> it's super bright. You could keep it that bright. You can water it down to make it lighter. I might add a little bright uh, cadmium deep, I'm sorry, cadmium red light. And that makes it more rosy pink. Or you take that rose pink, you can add a little yellow, makes a blush. And you just water down the pink itself. I don't want it so, this one actually in the photograph, it's more like a purple pink, like a magenta. So you could just water down magenta, right? And this kind of that color. I don't know, it depends on what you feel like. I like them all. And then the bright rose. I'll play around with a bunch of different pinks. I feel like that's better. So again, the tapping type of motion in the white spaces, pushing down in some areas. It might tap into the green and that's okay. You want a little bleed here and there. You don't want a lot. If you don't want a lot, don't make that pink so wet. See how I tapped it back on the paper towel? And then you go in and tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap. <laughs> Tippity tappity toe. Now the way around here, not to get it to turn like mud, if it's not dry, wait till it dries and then go over it. But sometimes you can play around with adding the bright pinks in and, and just trying to get all the excess water off, but you just do this little tapping dance movement. Once you get your pinks where you want them to be, then you can start to put in the deeper, darker greens because you want the deeper, darker greens to be around the blooms. And the blooms will get tiny, tiny, tiny as you go out here in the distance and bigger in the front because they're in the foreground. So now the screen was very, very light over here. You didn't mind it, right? On the, the pink going on, it wasn't gonna make it muddy. I'm still using just a number 12 brush and I probably could use this whole thing, but I'm gonna play around with the mountain without it. So I'm just doing this little teeny dabs up here and around here. As you see. Then we go back with our deep greens. Now the mine of might have died a little bit. I'm gonna go make that deep green again. Trying to make it less wet. Same colors again. The Prussian blue, the yellow, the burnt umber combo. That's what I like. Tap the excess water. And I'm gonna go around those pink blooms kind of on the bottom like I talked about. So if you had this down first and you had no space in between, it turned into mud. You know, because red and green make brown. And I'm sure the pink and green would do the same. Just putting this over in here. Like I said, the less water, the less it's gonna move. This is still blending. Much drier on the left hand side than the right hand side. So it's much more easy to maneuver. Except up here. It's a little damper up here. And out here, the colors would get lighter on foreground. I'll be able to... I'm going to move on to the mountain. And this dries. I'm going to come back to it and get a little more fine detail at the end. So the mountain, like I talked about gray, I'm going to move some of this pink out of the way. There's the paint's gray. I'll add a little burnt umber to get that more brown gray. You can add some ultramarine blue. If you want to like a purple kind of tone to it. And then we have green here in the photograph on the front of the land. So if you're gonna start doing the mountains first, just be, be aware of where the green's gonna be. So I would just start going like this in the mountain. You can kind of leave the white space if you can be careful where it is. See how I'm leaving those little white little lines where the snow is kind of still there on the mountains. Uh, spring skiers. I am not one of them. <laughs> Get a little bit darker on the gray a little bit if you want to. Not too dark. I don't want it so, this is a nice soft gray. See so there's the yellow still. and I'm gonna put some softer gray again. You wanna keep it on the soft kind of tones. We don't wanna get really dark, a lot of this. And this is gonna be all green in here. Again, the mountain, 
leave some of that white. As you know, that the snow is still kind of there. And eventually it's going to go. Or maybe not, because it's so high up in the altitude. It doesn't go anywhere. So like I said, leave some of the snow. Leaving some snow there. I kind of leave white space in between where the mountain is. And like, if you always mess up, don't worry about it. Like I said, we can have some, like I'm going to just show you this one. I'm just going to mess that one up, just fill it all in. Um, we have gouache, so just put the white caps in. So just kind of filling in this gray part. Going quickly. And then we're going to start to add in our greens with the trees in the foreground of this area. Get the mountains. Still want to show those little white areas. Just fill this in and around there. All right, why don't you loosely paint in the mountains? We can stop playing around with the greens that are in the background here on part of the mountain. So just kind of filling that in with that bright light green that we had, all right? It's a good thing we made all those greens. Just filling that whole area in. Right up into that pink. Same thing here. Just really loosely sticking this green. You can go up into the mountain. Just like that. So at this point, you can play around with adding a little bit of depth to this. Just a little bit here. You see some deeper greens up in this mountainous area. I don't want to play around too much because I don't want to be overworked and I want to just put in the nice front bushes. Well, not bushes, but the trees. You see that? I'm just adding a little bit of this dark green you see here. Kind of going up into the mountain. I'm just taking my brush, slowly kind of just putting it up here. You can see some green up in the mountain over in here. Playing around with that. This part was the yellow. We can just actually take our brush and dip it in some of the yellow. Get that yellow green. Remember the yellow green the mountain? The bright yellow. So you just take your brush and dip it on the yellow and just tap it in those areas that where the sun is hitting it. Right? Remember that? And the sun's hitting it back over here in this field. And over here. I don't think it's necessary to be so technical with this. It's just an indication of where it is. And then the greens are a little bit darker down in here, this area. The front brushes will get much darker. So we're going to do like the little mounds, some like kind of like triangles, some of them not. So you paint like a little tri, like a little upside down teardrop, right? Like this. Kind of connect it a little bit. They're not specifically a super shape. Just a little bit darker green. It can just be like a, almost like a solid color if you wanted to do that. Make, make your life a lot easier. And here you can put some evergreen trees. It, you know, get real creative if you want to. I'm just kind of tapping this green around, putting a little tops of trees right there. As you can see them. Get a little bit darker still. on the right side. And I'll add some more depth too in a minute. I'm just going to fill in some more with green. This is when you use barely any water and you can kind of play around just like you would in the foreground here. I would go back into my greens that are kind of dyed basically. They've, they've dried really light, they're not as bright. You can go back and do some dry brushing, get that bright green in there. Fill that in. You can because the pink kind of was blended all in one big splotch. Go in here and just go on top and tippy tap around some of these pinks. So it doesn't look like one big splash. <laughs> you know, and then I've got the bright yellow green to do the same thing. Okay, I switched from the number 12 brush. I grabbed the Princeton 8 long round because I felt like it would be better. 
and I've mixed up some more dark green. Here you can kind of just make those little evergreen trees and try and put the darker green around the side or even just make them one big color. I mean, it doesn't really matter. You can kind of make the bush kind of really big, like a little triangle. Like It looks like a triangle, like an upside down teardrop, but then you can just tap it on the sides to give it that evergreen kind of tree look. And I'm making mine a little bit darker than than what they have in the photograph, so you can kind of see it. I'm doing these little tippy tops. And do some smaller ones over here. And then there's some over here on the left-hand side. Now you can make it look more like a true evergreen. I don't think it's necessary. Same thing here. They kind of look like little blobs. I'm just playing around with them. The colors here. So it's just a line down, a little wiggle wiggle on the sides, going bigger to the bottom. Get that evergreen. It's very bright. If you want to dull it down, you could add, like I added some brown in here, and get really dark, see? Or even more Prussian blue to get even darker. Depends on how you want to do it. Then it's pretty dark right there. Just do a couple little doodads, little lines, you can do little trees, smaller trees. Take that same bright green and just kind of go around some of these pretty pink blooms. Now kind of all kind of dispersed and went went. You can take it and make some little lines so you can actually see some stems like this. And now that my mountain is kind of dry, I'm going to go back and do another pass of the gray. So it's not just this one flat color. I want a little deeper. And I would suggest doing it like around the white areas so it looks more authentic, natural. I'm just kind of tapping around some of those white areas. See that? Wiggling the brush. There's little grooves that you see in the mountains just to make it look a little more natural looking, not just kind of goofy and fake. Getting a little darker around some of the white splotches, especially on the top. It just shouldn't be that light. It should be a little bit darker. It can be lighter on the bottom, but not on the top. So the top should get a little bit darker. Just gonna grab some more Payne's Gray. You don't want it too dark though, so. Just be just be cautious of that. This one's a little bit dark. So down here might look a little light. You can keep it that way. I might go back and grab some browns. Play around with putting a little more details. You can see a couple little, could be tumbleweeds or whatever is out there in that landmass. Be creative. Getting a little darker in the the eye. So we have kind of a blob thing happening here. This is where your white gouache comes into play. You can mix that white gouache with your pink. I've mixed it with pink. See, now we got a light pink gouache. <laughs> Didn't think you could do that, right? And then you can tap in the light pink in between some of those darker pinks. In here, and that's how you can get the pink to go right over the greens so without getting them muddy. By the way, you can do the same thing with any color. So here's the green. I've got a little gouache. It will get kind of weird because it's white, but you can do the same thing with the green. So like I said, if you went over the pinks, they got too pinky and you want to go put some more greens back in. This is where you can fill in those white areas. And that green's nice and bright with the gouache. You can just fill it all in. Tricks of the trade. Always at the end, you put your darkest value at the end, right? Because you're building from light to dark. You don't go right into dark. So now I'm going to go in with these dark greens around the blooms. I can make those little stems so you can see them more. And you would see them more up front than you would see in the back. So that's why these ones are darker. Just putting in these grasses. And they can be dark greens, they can have some browns. Change them up. 
as you can see they're darker on the edges just go real quick again therapy <laughs> a lot of fun doing this I right, just add a few here and there on the topper topper areas and keep it simple on those and then add more longer ones in the bottom okay so once that's all done and dry we just take up the tip this is the best part right it's like instant beautiful picture and then we have the last big piece look at that look how pretty that is and there's two cards at once so you can have it not have a card it can be just framed like this you know you see so you have two frames but I'm put some tape down or whatever you have you can put it on a card and you have two cards ready to go for somebody who loves the mountains lives near the mountains springtime you know whatever or even just like I said it can just be framed yourself so I hope this was fun I hope you enjoyed it um, really just I just broke down the mountain thing it's just darker up top leaving some white spaces if you forget it you take the gouache and just tap, paint in the white spaces the gouache is your little friend and just tippy tap now some of these blooms might seem a little dark pink you can add the white you know playing around with moving color and then you get the dry brush in the center so there you go two cards <laughs> out of one painting you can do this with bookmarks all kinds of things so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, if you haven't hit the bell notification button, please do so so you know my tutorial is up. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. We have a lot of fun over here. And take care, and I'll speak to you soon.